This morning's Breakfast Bible Bite is taken from Psalm 61, verses 2 and 3 and 5, where David prays that God will become the rock of inheritance. Verse 2 of 61 reads, From the end of the earth I call to you when my heart is faint. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. David seeks an actual audience with God, one where he would be aware that God would make his attentive ear known to the disposed king. He is not interested in the suppositions of prayer uh, answers perceived by ritualists who have sung their harmonies and are satisfied with their self-concocted answers. David is not interested in the concoctions of men. He seeks an audience with the one who stands upon the higher pedestal than he himself does, one who is a rock and is higher than David himself. On this side of the cross, Christ is that rock, and he has left each true believer with an indwelling presence of his Holy Spirit, who is prepared to communicate our prayers directly to the throne room of heaven. Our wants, our needs, and our unfulfilled obligations. These address the ears of Almighty God. We read in Romans 8.26, In the same way the Spirit also joins to help in our weakness, because we are limited in our understanding of the outworking results of these prayers. We do not necessarily know how to pray for godly results, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with unspoken groanings. Verse 3 of Psalm 61 reads, For you have been a refuge for me, a tower of strength against the enemy. We have all seen pictures of watchtowers, places where the approach of an enemy can be seen, or where archers are in a, archers are in a superior place of defense and refuge. David's prayer is based on two known facts about God. The first is history. In Israel's past, God has demonstrated his ability to rescue in all situations, regardless of the seeming impossible impediments. And the second is of surety of God's unchanging nature. These are David's watchtowers, and both of these are solid reasons upon which you and I can, re- can base our prayers. God's work in our own history should nurture our faith in him. Verse 5 of Psalm 61 reads, For you have heard my vows, O God, You have given me the inheritance of those who fear your name. David asserts with confidence that God has heard his vows, his promises to serve him forever. I'm not certain what gave David the confidence to know that God has heard him. But for you and me on this side of Pentecost, it is God's indwelling Holy Spirit that gives us that assurance. What I am certain of is that our God is a covenant keeper, and we must never take lightly our promises to him. Fortunately for me and for you, also, forgiveness can be found through repentance. For I am certain that in the past I have broken promises to my Creator, yet I have received complete forgiveness through my regrets. Our Lord Jesus warned us against making idle promises in Matthew 5, 33-37. You have also heard that our ancestors were told you must not break your vows. You must carry out the vows you make to the Lord. But I say to you, do not make any vows. Do not say by heaven because heaven is God's throne. And do not say by the earth because the earth is his footstool. And do not say by Jerusalem, for Jerusalem is the city of the great king. Do not even say by my head, for you can't turn one hair white or black. Just say a simple yes, I will, or no, I won't. Anything beyond that is from the evil one. How many times do we hear the slang phrase, I swear to God, come out of someone's mouth? All that has been troubling David's mind has passed as he looks with he looks forward with confidence, having no doubts that what he asks for will be conferred. The inheritance given to David is the same that is given to all of God's children. It is the privileged presence, prayer, and peace of knowing that we have been adopted in it as part of God's family. We are children of the King. The Spirit writes through Paul's pen in Romans eight fourteen. All of those led by God's Spirit are God's Son. 
for you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you received the spirit of adoption on whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies together with our spirit that we are God's children. And if children also heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ, seeing that we must suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. Those who become adopted children into God's families are described throughout the Holy Scriptures as those who fear the name of God and are reverent worshipers who stand in awe of the Lord's authority. Not only is our old nature constrained by the fear of offending him, but we are humbled by his great love for us in spite of our inadequacies. 